the idea about the evolution of trust is that this is something that we have developed over a lot of generations. In fact, the way we can interact with other human beings follows very complex behavioral patterns. And now, all of a sudden, technological innovation has kicked in and we are in the middle of cultural transformation. So all that we can do, in terms of our human psychology, is to apply what we have applied over millennia and see how this works out in the digital world. Sometimes it does quite well and other times it doesn't. And this creates a very interesting psychological friction. The flow of information is a two-edged sword as are so many things in the digital domain. On one hand, if everybody can see every other's communication, if you get this radical transparency um, through um, broadcasting technologies and the like, that certainly contributes to an openness. Um, however, at the same time, from a psychological perspective, you can't have openness of that sort, this radical transparency, all the time. In fact, you also need moments of confidentiality, moments of intimacy. Some interpersonal relationships cannot be developed in open public space. And most of our cyberspace is like open and public space. So we need to find ways of regulating the level of openness and the flow of information much more flexibly. We can do this naturally with lots of aspects in our everyday lives. We need to do it more artificially when we're using technology. It's a very good question whether our social spheres online, particular social groups, that would suffer from increased visibility of communication. And although we don't have the data at the moment at hand, it is very easy from a psychological point of view to come up with examples. Take mental health issues, for example. In many societies and cultures, mental health issues typically come with a certain stigma, which means they are negatively stereotyped. People wouldn't necessarily want that type of information to become public. They want to keep that information to themselves. And they have, at the same time, the need to share that information with very select others. Now, the moment you share information, the dangers are that you're using some broadcasting channel to do that. And this might have actually rather strong adverse effects. It can have real adverse effects, so negative repercussions through the network, other, people's, other people commenting negatively on it. It can also have simple negative repercussions for the individual, like the idea, oh, this is not what I wanted to tell everybody. And this basic model, oh no, this is not what I wanted to tell everybody, this can apply to particular social spheres and thereby turn into disadvantages.